Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 15 of Blender Master Course Materials, Textures and Nodes, Advanced Level of Node Components If you are new to this course then do check out the previous 15 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment and in this chapter we will be covering all these topics to understand the node components in Blender So let's begin with it So let's first add a shader editor So right click here, select horizontal split and let's split the area into two parts left click to finalize click on this icon and select shader editor let's go to the render view also and i'll change the render engine to cycles so whenever you are working on a material you have to start with a map or basically an input node and so in this chapter first we'll see how these maps work by using a separate xyz node for this we have to add an input node here so press shift plus a go to input and select texture coordinate and let's place it here now these are the seven maps that are available in this texture coordinate node and now we have to add a separate xyz node for this press shift plus a go to converter and from here you can add the separate xyz node let's place it here the reason for adding this is that we'll be connecting this texture coordinate with the principal bstf through this separate xyz node and in this we will see how we get different results by using different maps here on our objects material so first let's try this generated one and let's connect it to the vector and now if i connect this x socket with the base color you will notice some changes here now in most of the cases you should connect the sockets of same color together but it won't give you any error if you connect different color sockets together also so right now i've connected this x socket with the base color and we get this result let's see what does it mean but before that you need to understand one thing and it's that the black color always stand for the value of 0 and white color always stand for the value of 1 so now if i see this cube then we notice that it changes its color in the x direction from black to white that's because we use this x socket here so basically here in the beginning it has a value of 0 and so it's black colored and as it moves further in the x direction that is at this end it has a value of 1 and so it's white colored similarly if i connect the y socket to the base color you will notice the same with y axis as well initially in the y axis it is black colored and as you go forward in the y direction then it turns into white that is the value of 1 also if i use the z socket and connect it to the base color then you can see that at the lowermost end it's black colored and as you move upwards in the z direction it turns white that is from value of 0 to value of 1 but this thing will change if i change this generated to object so i'll select this object socket and connect it to the vector now the object map works in a slightly different way instead of going from 0 to 1 it works from minus 1 to 1 since the z axis is selected here so at the lowermost point its value is minus 1 at the middle it's 0 and at the top it's 1 now always remember that if its value is minus 1 or basically anything less than 0 then also it will appear as completely black only when you move from 0 to 1 you will notice the change of color from black to white so basically the generated map has the value from 0 to 1 and the object map has the value from minus 1 to 1 and we can even verify this by using a math node so first let's see what a math node does first i'll select these and let's move them here press shift plus a go to converter and add math node and let's place it here so first let's understand what this math node is actually blender allows you to use a math node in order to do some mathematical operations on the values that are coming from input and it has many options available here so if i click on this drop down then you can see that there's so many functions here like add subtract so basically you can use these to perform a particular mathematical operation on any particular number or maybe two or three numbers as well for example if you want to add two or three numbers or basically the values then you can use this add function or similarly you can also use the subtract multiply and other things we'll be exploring this in detail while covering the geometry nodes but currently let's select the absolute function from here now for those of you who don't know what absolute function is in mathematics it is a function which basically takes the value of a number as an input and if the number is negative then it converts it into a positive number and if it's zero or positive then the value will remain same for example, if I take minus 5 and apply the absolute function on it, then the output that it will give will be equal to 5. But if I apply this function on a positive number like 6, then it would return the same number as the output since it is positive. So as I told you that when you're using this object map with the z-axis, then at the lowermost point, the value will be minus 1. In the middle, it will be 0. And at the top it will be 1 and since i applied this absolute node here so it took minus 1 as the input which was at the bottom and converted it to 1 which makes it look white now but at the middle the input value was 0 
and when the absolute function is applied over 0 then the result would also be 0 so it looks black also on the top the input value was 1 and after applying the absolute function the value will still remain 1 since it is positive and in most of the cases you will be using either the generated one or the object one out of these 7 maps also sometimes you will be using UV when you have to do texture mapping on your object with the help of an image which we learned in our previous chapter but mostly you would be using generated map or the object map and now that we have covered the concept of these important maps there is one more thing to tell you it might be possible that you would be facing some difficulty in understanding the function of each of these nodes especially if you are exploring these materials textures and nodes for the very first time in blender and that's completely fine because currently you should not focus on the complete functionality of each and every node because see there are over 100 nodes in blender and i'll be covering all of these nodes in the chapters related to geometry nodes in this course there we'll be understanding each and every node in complete detail so currently your focus should be only on understanding what are the different options available to create different types of materials what happens on connecting different types of things together what results you can expect here and other similar things and with this we have established a solid foundation in node components or blender after understanding the concepts explained in these three chapters that is this one and the previous two you now have the essential knowledge that will be needed to build upon in the future chapters so that's all in this chapter from the next chapter we'll begin with the understanding of textures and we'll understand these four textures in complete detail so our next chapter is gonna be the chapter number 16 textures part 1 so if you are new to this channel then don't forget to subscribe smash that like button and click on that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one